Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. This could be a really controversial episode, at least to some audiophiles and maybe some manufacturers, but you'll have to wait to the end to see why. But first, let me tell you what it is about. I'm taking you on the road again, this time to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I went in early September to visit EMM Labs and Meitner Audio. These companies were founded by Ed Meitner, a legend in audio designing and a real name in digital audio conversion, if you know his history. Now, in this video is his son, Amadeus Meitner, talking about what they call the analog board, which is really an analog and digital board because that's where the digital to analog conversion takes place. And they make a in-the-house bespoke architecture for their DACs. Watch, and here is what he had to say. So Amadeus, we are in one of the testing rooms at EMM Labs Meitner Audio, and we're each holding a board that they're similar, but not quite. What, what are they? These are the analog boards comprising of the D-Day converter modules, the clock, the analog output stage of our DA2 and DV2 converters. Okay, so one of the hallmarks of EMM Labs and Meitner Audio, and before that, your father's designs, has been single bit converters. Now, why do these two boards look different? Can you explain that? And also, where are the converters? On the board that you're holding, we haven't installed the protective caps on any of the converters or the clock yet. Those things. And it's these caps that we're talking about. So on the left and the right side of the board, you can see the red portions on the board that you're holding. That's where each of the dual mono differential converters are. Okay, so these are single bit DACs. We don't have to get hard into the technical details, but they're one bit converters and they're not off the shelf chips. They're made in house. Absolutely not. We've never used off the shelf chips. We design all of our converters in house and they're manufactured very close to the factory here in Calgary. So also one of the hallmarks of Meitner products, Ed Meitner's products for mm -hmm. EMM Labs and Meitner Audio, and then before that has been great clocking for Correct. the reduction or elimination of jitter, timing related errors. And he's always been adamant that it has to be done within the converter or player and right where the converter chips are. You don't want it external. You don't want a wire in there. You want it right there. That's his philosophy, yeah. And as you can see, this is our M Clock 2 module here. It's also designed by Ed, and it sits directly next to the D to A modules, right to the left and right to the right. So once that asynchronous clocking is done, the next destination for it is the conversion itself. And it's called M Clock. M Clock 2 okay. in the DA2 and DV2. Again, not an off the shelf design. It is proprietary to you guys. There's nothing on this circuit board that's off the shelf. It's all proprietary to us. And Ed has spent the better part of 20 years honing this design to make it the absolute best that he can. Now, you said this went into which converter? EMM Labs DA2 and DV2. Okay, so it's the same architecture though in all of the products, right? Like in the Mitner Audio MA3, it's the same general architecture, just different boards? The MA3 has the same general scheme. We use a different board material. The DA2 and DV2, which is the boards that we're holding now, this is a very high quality ceramic grade circuit board, whereas the MA3 uses a less expensive FR4 fiberglass material. The typical green or brown colored board you always see. Correct. The other thing that differentiates the DA2 and DV2 from the MA3 is the tolerance of the individual components and how they're laid out on the board. The MA3 obviously had to have something different to it. Because it's much lower price. Exactly. It's much lower price. It's more accessible. Uh, and the DA2 and DV2 is still our flagship. And this is where we put cost no object into the equation. Okay. Well, thank you. Because it was a really an interesting thing to be able to see literally under the hood of what's there. That's what's under the, the hood and we're not ashamed of it. We've been known for this for 20 years or more. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get to the controversy. The clock or really the placement of the clock. In the EMM Labs Meitner circuits, they're adamant. It has to be right at the conversion point. And when I was there in Calgary, I talked at length to Ed himself and he's a fascinating individual. Now, Nobody 
denies the importance of clocking, and certainly not Ed, because he was one of the first to talk about this decades ago in high-end audio, and even made a test instrument back in the 90s to measure what's called jitter, which has to do with timing irregularities. So he knows the importance of clocking as well as anybody, and he knows how to deal with it. And according to him, one of the stupidest things you can do, and those are his words, is pull that clock away from the digital to analog conversion area and put it in an external box. And this flies in the face of what is happening in super high-end digital conversion. There are these converters that are usually really expensive and they have a clock built in, but they have the option for an external clock. Well, what's with this external clock? Is it a bad idea to pull the clock out? Ed's not the only one who's told me. Great digital designers have said, yeah, it has to be right there at the conversion point. So is there a benefit in pulling it out? And can you prove there's a benefit in pulling it out? And I'm talking about the designers here. Now, people often say that they hear a difference with these external clocks. And I can believe that, but people mistake often a difference is better. It could be better or worse, and that's harder to really gauge. Is it better? Can the manufacturer prove that? Can the listener prove that? Is it a better clock in this box? If it's a better clock, and I've already paid a lot for this converter here that has a clock, couldn't have you just put the better clock into this converter? And here's the real cynical part. Or is it just to sell another box? These are hard, tough questions, and I'm not afraid to put up with questions myself. If manufacturers or viewers want to contact me, hey, there's the comment section below. I'm easy to find on email and social media as well. I would like to hear from you. I would like to know your thoughts. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching.